In today's look at solving basics for trig equations, we will solve the equation cosine theta equals negative one half. And so hopefully you're familiar with finding exact values. If not, go check out some videos on that. Um, that's a really helpful foundation for solving basic trig equations because you're essentially working in the opposite direction. So all those skills should carry over. Now, I like to think when solving an equation like this, which angles have a cosine of negative one half. And so that really helps you think back to, okay, what would I do if I were working an exact value problem, if I were finding an exact value? So let's see how we can work this. Here's a quick outline, two easy steps. The first step is all analysis. So you're going to find out which quadrants your angles should be in. Um, and you'll also find your reference angle. So you'll work with your special right triangle, and then those two things together will help you determine your angle answers and how to, how to state them correctly. So we'll do this for cosine theta equals negative one half. So step one, let's analyze. We're going to use that acronym ASTC. You may be familiar with it. Think all students take classes. And this is just a quick way to label your quadrants so that you can remember which trig functions are positive in each of them. So work your way around from quadrant one, go counterclockwise, and label A, S, T, C. And this tells you again which trig functions are positive in these quadrants. So in quadrant one, all are positive. The A helps you remember that. The S tells you sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in quadrant two. It's tangent and cotangent, positive in quadrant three, and cosine and secant are positive in quadrant four. So looking over to our equation, we want cosine of angles where we have a negative value, negative one half. So we know that cosine is positive in quadrants one and four, and since we want negative values for cosine, we must be working in quadrants two and three. So let's sketch in those angles and then we'll move on to finding our reference angle. Okay, so when we're finding our reference triangle, you definitely want to be familiar with your special right triangles and how they work on the unit circle. Um, I'll post a link to a playlist that has videos on that if you're looking for some extra help there. Um, but right now, let's just recall that when we're dealing with cosine of an angle on the unit circle, it's going to be the X coordinate. So think the horizontal leg in terms of triangle. Um, in terms of triangles. So that's the shorter value for your special right triangle. That means the vertical leg is the longer one. And we're dealing with this special right triangle that has a 60 degree central angle. I call it the 60, 30, 90 special right triangle. And so that means our reference angle for both of our angles is going to be 60 degrees, or usually we're working in radians when solving trig equations. So we'll call that a pi over three reference angle. And remember, reference angle is simply from terminal side to x-axis. How much rotation is there? All right, so now that we know this, we can determine and state our angle answers, step two. I like to do a little bit of labeling here. So we know that a half rotation would be pi. And since we know our reference angle has got a denominator of three, let's write it as three pi over three. Okay, so we know our quadrant two angle. Let's tackle that one first is going to be rotation like this. So it's pi over three less than pi or three pi over three. So just do quick subtraction there. And that tells you that your angle in quadrant two must be two pi over three. All right, now let's find our angle in quadrant three. So similarly, we know a half rotation around is three pi over three, and then we go one pi over three more. So that must be addition. 3 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. And eventually you'll get so familiar with this, you'll just know that these are the two angles in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 that have the reference angle of pi over 3. Um, that's another really nice perk of radians. It's very easy to find these. All right, so this is going to be our solution if we are on that interval from 0 to 2 pi, or our solution's on the unit circle. Let's say you wanted to write it so that you had for all solutions. So if some, some problem said find or solve this for all solutions, that means not only the ones that are from the unit circle, but all the angles that are coterminal to each of them. 
And so we can write the solution in a really clever way. We'll write two equation solutions. So let's start with the quadrant two angle first. We're going to say that theta can be two pi over three plus two pi k, where k is any integer. And so what that does, remember two pi is a full rotation around, it says two pi and then rotate again and you'll have another solution. And we can do the same thing for four pi over three. So we'll say theta also can be four pi over three plus two pi k. You may use any other variable. N is another common one. Um, so it's just whatever you like. Don't forget you can substitute in your answers back into the original equation just to double check that they are correct. Um, but that's really all there is to solving this basic trig equation. Um, check out the links in the video description if you want more worked examples or help with any of the other unit circle and solving type topics. And thanks for watching.